Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer with another compound sample. This time it's a number 8 with some nice swirls inside. Let's take a look at the underlying shapes. The compound consists of 5 shapes on top of the 2 rings that make the base shape of the number 8. There is the swirls, they are mirrored on the bottom side. And there is the long curve that goes across the two connecting the upper and the lower circle. On their own these shapes look rather complex but they're rather simple once you break them up. Four circles that make the number eight, inner and outer circles, and inside of those, those swirls are nothing but another circle that is positioned in three different spots to make the curve. There's one at the bottom, one in the center and one at the top of each of the rings. And then again this gets mirrored to the bottom and flipped to the side because the swirls are on the other side in the lower half. So basically we just have a lot of circles. Now the key is to combine them to make the shapes and the ideal way to do that in Affinity Designer is to work with compounds. You could do the same with Boolean operations. The Boolean add and subtract will do the trick as well, but the downside is you are destroying the base objects. With the compound, the base shapes stay intact and can be moved, edited and altered as you go. Let's start with the circle. This is going to be the biggest of the three. I give it the stroke so you can see what I'm doing with it later. I duplicate it to create the smaller one for the inside and duplicate it again, turn on the snapping because we want a third circle that is the size from the outer part of the bigger circle to the other side of the smaller circle. That way the swirls will align, create two more duplicates, one aligned centered to the large circle at the top and one at the bottom. Select all the shapes, duplicate them and flip them horizontally and move them below. Again, the snapping works as you want to align the top of the outer ring to the bottom of the inner ring above. We now have all our base shapes. I organize them by putting them into a separate layer. That way I can always copy and paste from there. So all these go into my base shape layer and then goes into my work layer. I can't help it, it must be in the genes, I'm German and it's easier for me to just keep things organized, especially when I look at a file weeks or months or even years later. So now we take the four basic shapes that form the eight and copy them into a new layer at the top and work with them. So if I then give them a fill, we see we have the base shapes. I combine them with the layer create compound. By default, it adds all shapes together. If we select the inner smaller shapes now and turn them from add to subtract, we have our basic eight. Next up is the larger swirl. For that we need the big, the small and the medium circle. I duplicate them to the top again, give them a lighter color so you can see the different shapes here. Again, I do the compound and combine them. In this case, the small one gets subtracted again because that is the hole in the center. I move it up in the layer stack so it can actually work on the two other shapes below. Then I turn the middle circle to a pi and adjust the segments. That way I can make it a three quarter pi. Thank you. 
I do the same thing with the largest circle, I turn it into a pi, and in this case we just need one quarter of it. This gives us the first swirl shape. Next up is the smaller swirl. This one will be made of the smallest and the mid-size bottom circle. Copy them above to the work layer, create a compound and cut out the small ellipse from the larger one. As you can see, the layering matters. The small circle needs to be above the larger one in order for the subtract to work. In this case, we just need half of the larger circle, so I turn it into a pi and make it just half a circle. And with that, we have the second swirl shape. Next, I copy the large circles and the centered mid-size circles. I create another compound with those four shapes. The mid-size circles are set to subtract. And the large ones are set to pies and used as just a half circle. This gives us the four base shapes that the design is made of. Now we just need to copy the two inner swirls and flip them vertically and horizontally so we can place them on the bottom ring that makes up the eight. With all shapes in place, it's time to give them some color. In this case, I have a gradient that goes from blue to green to a lighter green back to blue. I use it on the base shape of the eight and the swirl and then alter it for the smaller swirls where we just go from the light green to the dark blue via the mid green. And I use the same one and copy the fill to the opposite layer on the bottom ring, do the same with the inner swirl, copy it, adjust it, and there's the finished design. I added a drop shadow just to make it stand out a little bit more, but basically it was a matter of adjusting the circles to create something that looks way more complex than the base shapes it's created from. Simple use of circles, compounds, turning circles into pies and adding gradients. And we have a rather complex looking design of the number eight. If you enjoyed this video, like it, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel and let me know what you would like to see in this channel or on my blog. And I will see you again soon.